Welcome to the Church Communications Podcast. I'm Katie Allred. And I'm Kenny Jang. We want to help you become a better church communicator. And this is the place we're going to talk about strategies and best practices for your church. Let's get started. Hey folks, welcome to today's episode. Uh, Katie, I am so glad that we're back at it, at the microphones. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Um, it's been a joy. Um, one of the things that um, during our break between episodes, we were able to get together in Nashville for a conference. And um, one of the things that I thought was great was meeting some of our community members, right? Wasn't that fun? It's the best. I mean, meeting church communicators that have been in the group for such a long time, like I got to meet Patty Shearing. Yes. And it's so like, it's so happy to me because I'm like, oh, finally, like, because I've known Patty online for so long. So it's really nice to actually make the connection of like the face to face. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is one of the fun things as we travel around the country, meeting up um, with each and every one of you. I felt, I feel like that should be our bucket list, traveling to all 50 states <laughs> and having a meetup uh, yeah. to, to meet everybody in the group. Um, but in the meantime, we can't get together. We use these virtually mediated mediums like podcasting to connect and learn together. So today, Katie, what are we going to talk about on the podcast episode today? So today we're talking about using Google Analytics and the search console to gain actionable insights for your church. Whoa, you're smart. That's no, <laughs> you're smart, Kenny. Um, well, it's actually a very, very important topic. I feel like it's one of those things where people try to go surface level and then don't take that next step. And if you just take that one or two extra steps into the water in, in terms of Google Analytics, in terms of the search console that Google gives you, um, the return on investment is huge, right, Katie? Right. So, Kenny, can you tell me what Google Analytics actually is? Yeah. So, uh, we talk about analytics. Analytics is just a fancy word for data, right? And so um, everybody has a website today. Um, what what you want to do is understand how it's being used, who's using it, when people are using it, et cetera. And so Google offers a free software or you know SaaS product that is called Google Analytics. So it's completely free to everybody. And you just need to install a couple of snippets of code on every page of your site. Um, if you have a WordPress site, they've got plugins that make it really easy. There's not much coding involved. Um, Google has something called the Tag Manager, another product that makes it really easy, no coding involved. But basically, once you install it, you are able to then see this, I mean, just this treasure chest of data. Um, literally, what pages on your website are being seen, the pathway they're going through your website, where they're coming from. Um, you know, and then you can make decisions, right? I think that's one of the, I think, fun parts to geek out on is to look at how mm -hmm. people are using your site and then making some of those critical decisions. What I love that Google Analytics really did for me when I worked at a church, we actually had analytics meetings every month uh, just to talk about what was being the most viewed content on our website and then what was being viewed the least. And what I loved is that it, it gave me um, so ammunition to take to meetings yes. to say, yes, I know that you really want this page about the food ministry on our website, but it, I've only had two people go to it in the last year. So clearly we don't really need this, this whole thing built out on the website because people aren't going to it, right? Or maybe you've been doing a daily devotional for years and your church, you know, the leadership loves it because they're thinking the church is reading it, but you find out that only like 10 people are really benefiting from it out of a congregation of like several thousand. And you're like, okay, maybe we shouldn't be putting all this work into something that only a few people are consuming. We should probably be putting it into something else. So it just gives you some data that you can actually use. So do you all know what the difference is between data and information? The information, information and data. What is the difference? Okay, so data is like raw. So without um, data is just it's just a a bunch of numbers, honestly. So without processing the data and analyzing the data, you don't get information. So information is like readable data, like for humans. So that's the difference. I teach marketing research, and so this is something that was like, okay, so like data is 
one thing, but information is actually another. So anyway, you can get a lot of good data from Google Analytics, but it's up to you to humanize that data and make it information that is actionable. So, so let's yeah. talk about some of the data that you get out of it. Um, so there's one, there's a couple of basics that I think everyone um, should zero in on first, right? First mm -hmm. is uh, what we call the bounce rate. Um, right. Bouncy, bouncy. What's a bounce rate, Katie? Can you tell us? So when they bounce, they're like, <laughs> you know, they're like I'm out of here. So a bounce rate is essentially, I have left the page. So it's figuring out the rate is like how many people are leaving a page, like, how many people are coming to a page and then leaving the entire website because of that page. And so you want your bounce rate to be really low. And so you're trying to figure out what pathway are these people going and is there not a call to action on this page? Are they just simply leaving because there's nothing else for them to do past this point? So the point of making a website is to keep people on that website for as long as possible. And of course, like sometimes your website is purely informational and I get that but you can always lead people to another location. So it's really important that you create a call to action on every single page so that people don't bounce what I, or don't leave. <laughs> but what I think about too, when I'm making like ministry websites is I always want each page just to have the who, the what, the when, and the where, and the how. So if it doesn't have those things, I'm like, no wonder people don't know what to do. And then they also need a call to action, one direct clear call to action on yeah. every single page. So if it's a children's ministry page, you need a call to action to sign up for some event that's coming up in the children's ministry or to plan a visit or um, to learn more about it. There has to be some kind of clear call to action that people understand I'm supposed to do this next. Well, you know, what's great about Google Analytics is it helps you understand if your call to actions are being followed through upon, right? Like right. is what you're asking the people to do something that they're actually mm -hmm. doing. And so there, there's a term called conversion goal. Um, it's not religious conversion. Can you share a little bit about what conversion really means in this case? We should have conversion goals though. You know, like if your church isn't con converting people, maybe you need to work on that. But okay. So a conversion goal on a website is basically taking people from point A to point B, right? We want to, them to actually um, register for an event or we want them to plan a visit. And so we can do this kind of conversion goal where we set up these code, pieces of code that tell us, hey, this person went from here and they finished this form here. And so we have converted a person, not like converted them yet into Christianity probably, but we have converted them at least into uh, our system. So that is what a conversion goal is. Nice. Now, outside of um, the actual analytics of, you know, the behavior of the people on your site, um, Google offers another tool that really helps you optimize your website, right? So it's not, we're not talking about the actual behavior. We're actually talking about the site itself. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Google Search Console. Um, Katie, can you share with us a little bit about like how how church communicators should really think about it as a first step if they've never heard about the Google Search Console product. It's just like Google Analytics. Yeah. Uh, but what can it tell you about your church website? So the Google Search Console, what it does, it's a free service again. So Google Analytics, totally free. Google Search Console is basically for webmasters. It allows them to index their website. So to check the indexing status of their site and to optimize the vis visibility of their website. So if you need to re-index your site on Google, Google Search Console allows you to do that. Nice. Um, it is, I would say, probably the second thing you should be installing, right? Like I right. think Google Analytics is first, mm -hmm. uh, Search Console is second. Actually, there's another product called Tag Manager. I think that's mm -hmm. another thing that you gotta get in there. Uh, yeah. But would you agree it's one of the top three or four things that you should be Signing you up for, uh, for yeah, your first website? For sure. You should definitely, okay, you've got to get Google Analytics set up. you got to get Google Search Console set up. Then I, I recommend, too, setting up Bing. Uh, there's several other search consoles. So don't just stop at Google. Like, look for the other ones. Like, Bing has actually become a major one. So I wouldn't leave Bing out. And then you should also install a Facebook Pixel, right? Yes. That's... Um... It's um, a Facebook pixel. It's a whole other episode, but basically it's free and you don't even need to advertise or spend money 
to benefit from the data and get some information mm -hmm. about the behavior of the people uh, coming to your site, etc. Have you ever wondered why people go to your church website and what they typically do once they're on it? As they say, knowledge is power, and you have the power to find out today through Google Analytics. Well, but many church leaders don't understand how to use Google Analytics, so um, the experts, our friends over at Missional Marketing um, has have been great. We've teamed together, we put together a PDF that reveals the top five questions you should ask Google Analytics and Google Search Console about your website. You can easily download that powerful PDF today for free. All you have to do is go to missionalmarketing.com slash F-I-V-E slash five. Okay, spelled out. That's missionalmarketing.com slash five. That's the word, five, F-I-V-E. So that's great. There's a couple other things that I think people get um, caught up on. You know, site, you know how much traffic your site gets, right? Mm -hmm. And so can we just talk about some of those things that Google Analytics and Search Console helps you with in terms of um, the traffic? Like what's, what's one metric they should be looking at um, in terms of, you know, the, the number of visitors to your site and to any given page? You know, I feel like the first thing you should definitely look at is returning visitors versus new visitors. So how many people to your site in the last year have been returning versus new? I would be, I would be suspect to say that I bet that you are going to have more new than you will returning. And right. so that makes you have to think about differently about your website because your website isn't for returning. It's not for the people in your congregation. You're going to soon find out that's really for the people in your community who are looking to get involved in your church. So that makes you think differently too. Another thing that's going to make you think differently is it will also tell you how many people are viewing your website on a desktop versus mobile. Yes. I'm going to bet that it's probably 70, 30 and it's going to soon be 80, 20 mobile. Okay. Mobile. Like Let's just mobile. get that straight. Let's get that clear, Katie, right? Like the majority of people visiting your website today probably mm -hmm. is mobile. It's on a yeah. mobile phone. It's not right. on, a, on a laptop. So if your website is not optimized for mobile use, it needs to be. So whoever your web designer is, you need to contact them. You can contact us. We would love to help you make your website more mobile friendly. Um, but they are going to be using it on the phone. They're going to be scrolling on their phone um, looking at your website. So that's another big thing that I like to look at. And then t the next thing I like to look at is what uh, what's the content and what's the content that they're going through the most and why we kind of just discuss that and that's where we go back to the bounce rate right like the, the intent of your content for the audience and the audience that actually is coming new versus returning visitors um, mm -hmm. the bounce rate is going to help you understand if you are providing and presenting content that's relevant right and and just to give you a rule of thumb i think in my experience 25 to 40 percent bounce rate is pretty good that middle range is that I think the 40 to 50, 55% range. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're higher than 50%, if you're in the 70% bounce rate or higher than 70% bounce rate, that, that means something's wrong with your content. It's not, it's not solving a problem. It's not attracting the people and holding them there, right? If 70% right. or more, if 80% of the people come to your website and click back or close the browser and leave within the first couple of seconds, um, that means your your site's not engaging, right? And so that's one of the things that I think is really important. Unless they got what they want, and then there's this thing called a CTR, right? That's one of the things that Google Analytics provides us. Um, can, you, can you share a little bit about CTRs and what that actually stands for? Yes, yeah, so it's a click-through rate. You have click-through rates on your emails too, right? And I mean, historically, click-through rates are low, so I don't want you to be discouraged by that at all. But like it's how essentially- low, Let's talk about numbers. Uh, so if you're on MailChimp or something, I mean, if you're using email, for an example, it, it, it's going to be like 3%. And honestly, if you get more than three, if you're getting 10%, you're, you're sitting, you're doing great. So don't feel like, oh, it has to be extremely high. It's really okay for it to be kind of honestly pretty low. It, you're probably doing well if you're getting in the range of three to 10%. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if you just think about your own daily habits in your inbox and just scrolling through um, all the emails, you're, you're not abandoning your email app and clicking through every single email, right? It's, it's a very low percentage that you actually fall through with the call to action on, on any given email in your inbox. And it's the mm-hmm. same thing when you're sending out emails, your click through rates are going to be low. Now you have to pay attention to them and your job is to really raise that. The higher that you are able to get, that means you're providing, you know, radically relevant content to the audience. You're delivering something that right. they want. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, overall, I think this, some of the stuff on Google analytics, Katie, um, can be very overwhelming for a lot of people. I think it's a, little, mm-hmm. a reason why a lot of churches don't actually, they might have it installed. I think but they're not probably more than 50% of websites have that have Google Analytics installed. People are not really doing anything with it. Um, can, as we close out the show, just can you just give this like frame it for that type of church? They have a website, mm-hmm. they have analytics installed, they might have Google Co- a Search Console. Um, what you know, what should the expectations be? Are they, should they be spending 10 hours a week, one hour a week? Should be, should they be hiring somebody to do it? Um, you know, what, I, I would love for you to help uh, give yeah. some, you know, guardrails for people just starting to get into this stuff. I think we really worked best when, because we took, we took a break from doing this at our church for a while. And I really think we benefited more from actually having a meeting about it. So I really do recommend just have one meeting per month and just sit down with your team and look at it as a team. And you feel like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. There, there's so many free courses on Google Analytics on how to read Google Analytics. There's a million YouTube videos out there about how you can get insight from Google Analytics. So don't let it scare you. But definitely, I would get together as a team and just look at it. Because as a team, you can see, like, you can't argue with the data. So what is great is that you can be like, okay, clearly this is working and this isn't working and we can make calls about things because of this. So I think getting together at least once a month, I'm not saying doing it like every single year, I mean, every single day, uh, but I think doing it once a month is is really good and very beneficial and will probably um, just confirm some things that you have been feeling and it will help you not to have feelings, but to have action. Yeah, right absolutely. to have data and so that way you don't have to like be angry at someone about yeah, it. yeah one of the things that um yeah I, I totally agree with you if it's not on your schedule you're never going to do it um and i think you, you should put something very short whether it's a 15 20 30 minute and may, if you have an hour a month put it on the calendar a month maybe it's an every other month thing uh, but it's something that you should be looking at periodically and even more so as we become much more digital in mm-hmm. everything that we do um, Katie, one of the things that I, I appreciate is that we were able to sit down recently and brainstorm with our friends over at Michelin Marketing, five questions that people can go over in that meeting. Um, and I just want to just throw them out there um, so that people get a sense of like what we actually do in these meetings. Um, mm-hmm. So the first question is like, just is our organic search traffic going? Like, is it up and to the right? If our traffic is not, if it's going down, and less people are discovering our site and come to our site, that's a problem, right? And so there's, so Google Analytics is great to just show those search trends. Um, the second one is, you know, what are those who discover our church? What are they actually searching for? How do they actually find us in keywords and things like that? That's what analytics is really good for. So like if your church is known for say your Celebrate Recovery Ministry and everyone's Googling Celebrate Recovery with your city name, um, you might then, and this is what you do with information and not data, is you might then build out more pages or resources for that subset of your community that's looking for celebrate recovery type of ministry uh, things, right? Uh, those are the types of things that you can actually find out in analytics. The other one is how often do people click um, the search results when given the opportunity? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, what types of searches um, are we not receiving traffic for that other people are searching for? Um, that we should be ranking for, right? So there's mm-hmm. there's definitely in the- Like churches church- in this area. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, for example, a missional Baptist church um, would want to exclude missional so that queries such as missional Baptist, missional church are filtered out of the results, right? So um, you want to make sure it's localized, churches near me or the church in your city, those types of things. 
Um, so that's, that's the type of question. And the last question that we typically ask is like, what pages on our, our website are working to actually get people in? What serves as that welcome mat, open door? The home page is no longer the, the front door of your website, right? Because of Google and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So what pages of your church website are serving as that landing page? And then how are they performing? Like what's going on with those pages that mm -hmm. people are finding to enter into your site, right? What, what basically, what side doors or windows of your house are right. people entering into and how's that working? Yeah. Um, like, is it the children's ministry pay page? attention to that? You know, I, I mean, it very well could be the children's ministry page because people are looking for events and things to do with their children. So if, if that's the case, then you need to put more information on your children's ministry page than you were previously putting. Maybe even information about Sunday morning, just services in general. Yes, absolutely. So um, we, we were fortunate. We've gotten the guys uh, over at Mitchell Marketing to actually... Um, give some guidance to those five questions. There's a PDF that we pulled together. Katie, can you share where people can find that free download so that anyone that wants to put that, you know, that review meeting on the calendar for their website, they get yeah. a sense of here's the skeleton. Here's a, you know, here's a jumping off point, um, a starting point mm -hmm. to have the discussions when you're looking at analytics and search console data. Sure. So the PDF is called the top five question, questions I'm sorry. you should ask Google Analytics and Search Console about your website. So if you want to see it, it's at missionalmarketing.com slash five. Yeah, five, and five is spelled out, oh, right? F-I-V-E. Spelled out, F-I-V-E, yes. So <laughs> missionalmarketing.com slash five in letters, F-I-V-E. Perfect. Um, well, that's about... Uh, the time that we have for today, we are continuing to march on in this um, this trajectory of looking at your website under the hood, et cetera. Um, I'm excited about this next episode, Katie. What do we, why don't we share just a teaser of what we're going to talk about um, in episode mm. five of this season? Yeah, episode five. We're going to continue talking about Google Analytics a little bit and just establishing and measuring those web conversion goals. So yes. how do you do it? um why should you do it those kind of things excited about exactly that. even like what goals should you have right those mm -hmm. types of things so um looking forward to sitting down this next time everybody here if you love what we're doing uh, we're getting great feedback and you want us to continue to march on these topics um please let us know drop a comment below uh, share a dm with one of us katie or i we'd love hearing from you guys um, one of the best things that you can also do is as you know, for podcasts, drop a review on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, because that is the most tangible way that you can help get this type of information out to other church communicators across the country. We want to really equip and empower as many church communicators as we can with this type of best practice um, in the digital front today. So, um, Katie, uh, next time, I think we're going to have to drill down and really go deep. Um, I think this is one of the things that we'll have to prepare for next time. Um, what what else are you looking forward to in this series? What are the questions you, you think uh, we should be answering in future episodes? Yeah, so I'm excited about just talking about landing pages in general. I think that's something that churches aren't really doing so much of for keywords. Yeah. And I think that's something that's going to have to change probably in the next 10 years. I, I want to talk about retargeting. I think this is one of those things where it's, it, was, it used to be like a, like a secret weapon, but it's now almost become a standard practice. And I think right. if, if a church isn't, if you haven't heard about retargeting, that's probably something one we want to talk about. Um, and then what else? Maybe one more idea in the future. Sermon videos. How can you make sermon videos work to grow web traffic? Wait, using sermon videos to draw traffic. That's, a, that's an interesting one. Yeah, and I think that you can easily do it. So I'm excited about sharing those kind of tips. Well, that sounds great. Again, if you have other ideas, please let us know uh, here at Church Communicate. Uh, we, we, seriously, we really want to be helpful for you, like almost like an extension of your team. Um, we, we treat you as family. This is a community where we are learning peer to peer every single day. So uh, we'd love for you to reach out to us, visit our website, uh, hop in the Facebook group and be a part of the conversation. Uh, but we'll check out here next time for episode five, right? Episode five of the podcast here 
on the Church Communications Podcast. Improving your church's website begins with a better understanding of your online audience through Google Analytics. Missional Marketing has created a powerful PDF you can download for free today that will offer insights into your church's online audience. So you can go to missionalmarketing.com slash F-I-V-E slash five, but spelled out. Again, that is missionalmarketing.com slash F-I-V-E and get it today.